Everybody uses a Scotch Bright, it makes it shiny. We don't want it shiny, we want it flat. Hey YouTube, it's Faye, and for today's video, since my cylinder head is almost complete, I figured that it was time for me to start putting some work in on prepping the block surface. So when it's done, then I'm done and I can just get right to it. So I asked Danny if he had any tips or tricks for doing this, and uh, surprise, surprise, he does. So <laughs> that is what this video is about. Here goes. Uh, basically at a 45 degree angle, and we're just going across the deck. This one's real dirty and it has broken studs, but just to show what I'm talking about. Are you starting to now see the lines? Yes, oh my gosh, yeah, I hope I can. Now you can see, and it just, and all I'm doing is just cleaning the deck, but you can see the lines, that was the yeah. brooch that was cutting this when it got cut. Yes. And all I'm doing is I'm bringing back the factory lines and removing the gasket material. I'm not really sitting there and decking the block. I can feel little, little spots because of the bolts that have been the studs that are in there. And I'm just going across the whole deck, but at a 45. I'm not sitting there going this way. I'm not sitting there going like this. And now you're not concerned about like metal shavings then going into the cylinders or going- No, because we're not removing any metal shavings. That's the thing. If you look at this, it's just gunk and gasket material. Yeah. There's no metal shavings. The, the blade is, you know, all we're doing is, is cleaning the deck. Now you're starting to see the factory lines. Yep. You can, oh, you totally. can, you can see the, the, the factory lines when it was originally cut. And we're going to keep doing this. You can see now the original cut of the brooch. See oh, the brooch mark? Yeah. Oh, totally. It's pretty obvious right here. So even from the from the from the factory, any machine is going to have some harmonic, some vibration, and that was originally the cut. It's rounded. You can see it from yeah. here to here. Oh, Goes yeah. all the way across, all the way across. And all we're doing is we're not taking any metal off the deck we're getting rid of all the all the crud there's all the crud in my hands yep. that was on here we're going all the way across and they'll keep coming up they'll just keep coming up all the lines and that's what we want to see we want to see the line and you want to just follow the line all the way across and you'll see them you'll, you'll see them in there and that's how you know you're finished when you that's can what, see yes. every single line well, we're gonna go, yes, and I'm gonna do a little more, and then we're gonna get it to where we see the lines going all the way through. What we're looking for, what I'm looking for, is this line, I can see it, right there, disappearing in here. Yep. And then coming back over here. And then that's a low spot. Because the line comes through here, disappears, and then right up here on the top, it comes back. So I'm looking at these lines, and I wanna see the line go all the way through. When you see a spot, I'm looking mainly in here. Mainly between, in between the centers, the in between okay. the centers. Here you can see, in be there's a gasket that goes right there. And you can see the line. The line goes right right through there. Yep. Right through there. I'm not getting it through there much. But you can take off a thousands just by cleaning. Just by cleaning. But I'm not, if I had a low spot here, I wouldn't sit here and get that spot to be shiny to make me feel better. <laughs> I would work the outside. Yeah. Work yes. the outside until it starts touching here. So you lower these ends and it made a touch right there. This is actually a 1948, and you can see in, from 1948, the deck's actually really nice. We're removing all the crud, and that's what you're gonna do. This is a 1948, so you can imagine your Toyota, you're gonna take this, and you're gonna do that, and you're gonna be, oh my gosh, it'll be perfect. It oh, will I be perfect. And oh my God, I'm so glad I haven't touched it yet. <laughs> yeah, that's why you don't wanna use, everybody uses a Scotch Bright, it makes it shiny. We don't want it shiny. We want it flat. And about, by going at a, at a 45 degree angle, and a 45 degree angle, we're not really working any one spot. But that's just an example of what, of what we do. So now that you've finished cleaning off your block surface with your lubricant and your dull machinist's file, uh, you've got to clean the lubricant off, right? Because there should be nothing on the surface when you put a metal head gasket on, in my case. So what you should use for cleaning that off is, of course, some 
And yeah. then you know how like you use the red rags and like they just get tore up on everything and they lose little little. What do you use for um for wrap? I mean, I see this shop towel here, but mm -hmm. is that what you use for? That, that, that's what we use. And, this, then, and then does it not have the little fibers? It doesn't have all? the fibers, just like a, a blue sh shop rag. You see, it's really you know. But when these are new, when when our shop guy brings us new ones, man. It looks like a, like a cat in here, everywhere else. So it's real simple. Is 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 just before everything is done, I use a you know a lot of brake clean and air. Yep. Brake clean will 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 release it from everything, yep. and then air blows it off. Right. But then after that, don't go get a rag on it. Right. So air is your best friend. Air 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 will as long as it's dry. That's why I use a brake clean. It dries it. Air gets rid of it. Right. If it has oil, WD-40 or anything, you can blow all you want on it. It doesn't really make any difference. In fact, you're probably blowing more crap on it. Yeah. I went to go clean it. I'm like, you know, I don't actually think I know the right way to clean it. And just before you're about to put the head on, you're going to have an MLS gasket. Um, uh, you know, it's a yep. multi-layered gasket. So it, it needs no sealant. It needs to be totally, totally, totally clean. Yes. Totally clean. I tell everybody, rub in alcohol, paint thinner, break clean, break clean, rub in alcohol, paint thinner. Wow. Anything that, that does not leave a residue. Which brake clean because it's made for brakes doesn't leave a residue. So, so uh, I like it more than more than car cleaner. But anything that once it, it dries, it evaporates, and you leave you leave nothing. Okay. And then just spray it down, blow dry it, and you're ready to put your heads on. And last but not least, don't forget to clean out all of the threads for your head bolts. And if you are reusing your head bolts, like I will be, clean the head bolts off really well. Thread every single bolt all the way down into the holes and back up. Make sure there is no resistance because that will mess up your final torque specifications. The same thing on the head bolts, you're going to run these head bolts in, in and out by hand. No one will do that. They think, oh, you're going to use an air ratchet. And then you're no. not going to get the, the, the right torque if there's any friction at all. Yeah. So, um, I have this funky little tool that I like that I got from Harbor Freight that's basically a pack of like glorified big pipe cleaners on a stick with a handle. <laughs> I'll link those below if you're interested. And I will actually be doing this to my car later on, but uh, there's a few videos that I have to insert in before that happens. So stay tuned and you'll see me do that eventually. And then maybe I'll show you me using that special tool to clean my head bolt holes. So <laughs> anyway, it's enough for this video. Onto the chickens, whoops. I mean, see you in my next video. Bye. Wait, this is a flathead Ford? This is a flathead Ford. Actually, it's eight Briggs & Strattons all tied together by a common crankshaft. It's a, what? Briggs, it's a Briggs & Stratton. If you ever pull a head off of a, of a Briggs & Stratton engine, it's a Briggs & Stratton. You know? Now, Briggs & Stratton probably got it from Henry Ford, so don't, don't all the guys start coming back, oh, you're making fun of my flathead. No, <laughs> but it's, it's, it, this is a, what's called a flathead Ford. The valves are in the deck. Yeah. Yes, so that's why it's a flathead. The head is just a flat piece of metal that has some water in it. All the valves are in here, just like a Briggs and Stratton gun. Five minutes to get something done really fast, and then five hours to fix something that took you five minutes. Yeah, or five hours if I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah. Or just take your time and do it right, and not have to re re you know to redo it. Mm -hmm. Another thing is, don't be hard on yourself if you have to redo something. If you're learning it yourself, if you're doing it yourself. You know, you can pay and go to school, or you can, you know, on the job training, on the job training on your own stuff. Don't on the job train on somebody else's stuff because then you're a shade tree mechanic. Yeah. And there's a lot of those already out there. there are so don't charge somebody to do something if you're just learning, you know. But to do it yourself, I mean, golly, do it yourself. Even if you screw it up, A, you're probably going to spend less money even fixing it the second time than taking it to a shop and having them screw it up for you, charge you that money, and then make an excuse of, of oh, you have other problems. Oh, you know what? We did the head, but you need a block now. You need rings. Well, if that's the case, you could have done it yourself. So unless you just uh, are timid and then you just down on yourself and then don't be a mechanic. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs>